Oz. The name on the street for the Oswald State Correctional Facility, Level 4. Oz is filled with murderers, rapists, racists, drug dealers with the most common of criminals. But what is it that makes a man common? Better yet, what makes him unique? Winning wars? Winning awards? No. What lifts a man out of the ordinary is who he loves and who loves him. Over the course of history, many famous people have joined the infamous in prison. Extraordinary human beings with noble characters who, for one reason or another, ended up on the wrong side of the law. Take Thomas Paine. He was arrested for treason, for fostering rebellion. Yet without his fiery writings, America might never have been free. Or Thomas More, the statesman, scholar, and saint who was sent to the Tower of London for being honest with his king. More's reward? was to be beheaded. Back in the day before the day, explorers would set out on ships to discover new worlds. Adventurers like Marco Polo and Christopher Columbus would sail into the horizon, not sure if they'd find a place to land or fall off the edge of the earth. As a result of their journeys, both Polo and Columbus got fame, fortune, and a pair of leg irons. That's right. The man who discovered America was a con arrested for embezzlement. After a few months in a dank, dirty dungeon, I bet old Chris started wishing he had fallen off the edge of the earth. <laughs> Rapist, pedophile, male hustlers. We got all kinds of men in Oz. Men who've turned sex into a crime. And for that, they belong in the deepest recesses of our hell. But as we also know, sex is not necessarily love. And there are times when love itself will get you incarcerated like Oscar Wilde, who loved and lost two years of his life sitting in Reading Jail. Two lips, maybe a little tongue pressed against two other lips. A simple kiss can be more lethal than a gun. Addiction is Satan's tool, his evil system to keep our people down. Galileo Galilei challenged the principle that had been accepted for over a thousand years that the Earth was the center of the universe, that everything revolved around us. The mad monks in the Inquisition imprisoned Galileo and ordered him to repudiate his theory, which he did. How much worse of a punishment is there than being forced to publicly deny your deepest beliefs, to say that what you know to be true is a lie. Pamela Turton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of fine people have sat staring at the inside of prison walls. Socrates, Gandhi, Joan of Arc, even our Lord Jesus Christ. He spent the last night of his life not with holy men, but with scum, like the kind we got in Nas. One of the last things Jesus did on earth was invite a prisoner to join him in heaven. He loved that criminal. I say he loved that criminal as much as he loved anyone. Jesus knew in his heart, it takes a lot to love a sinner. But the sinner, he needs it all the more. There are three kinds of laws which govern us all. First and foremost are the laws of God, followed closely by the laws of nature, and running a distant third, the laws created by man. You see, in order for man to create a law, a group of people have to get together and decide that they have come up with the ultimate truth, a basic inherent truth by which every citizen must conduct himself or be punished. The only problem is the group of people who decides on the ultimate truth is a bunch of politicians. Given the choice, would you rather be judged by women of the almighty or a vote by Congress? Here are some laws. Real laws currently on the books. Laws that if you broke, you'd end up in jail. The state of Rhode Island says it's illegal to throw pickle juice on a trolley. In the state of Washington, all lollipops are banned. Down in Indiana, baths may not be taken between the months of October and March. Over in San Francisco, you cannot pick up and throw used confetti. And in North Carolina, the law forbids dogs and cats to fight. But you see, 
That goes against the laws of nature. Dogs and cats are born enemies. In Arkansas, a man can legally beat his wife once a month. In Los Angeles, pay attention now. A man can legally beat his wife with a leather strap as long as the strap is less than two inches wide. Or if the woman gives her husband permission, he can use any size strap he wants. In Nogales, Arizona, it's illegal to wear suspenders. You gotta wonder what happened. What cataclysmic event occurred which caused the city fathers to decree that in our town, no one under any circumstances can wear suspenders? And are there radical fringe groups in Nogales who meet at night in secret, who slip off their belts and in defiance of the law put these suckers on? Eh? Man-made laws are arbitrary, transitory. What was perfectly legal yesterday suddenly becomes a felony today with the stroke of some president's pen. The laws of God, however, are carved in stone. They do not change. And when you break God's law, you don't go to prison. You go to hell. And you burn. Sigmund Freud said that the purpose of our dreams is to satisfy certain instinctual urges that society deems unacceptable. For instance, instead of killing an oppressive father, which would be too horrible to handle, we dream of throwing our boss out the window. Freud believed that the mind will often modify our dreams in order to keep strong emotions at bay. And with less emotion, a man can get up, go to work, and be a good citizen. The difference for us and Oz is we don't dream of throwing our boss out the window. We actually do it. You're dreaming. You're deep into REM sleep, and someone walks in. Someone who's dead. Someone you love, a father, a mother, a friend. And you're happy to see that person alive and well, happy to have a conversation, to say the things you never got a chance to say. But then you wake up, and the person you loved is still dead. And you get to mourn all over again. Wet dreams are the best. You start having them at like 12 years old. Every other night, you're making love to the most beautiful women in the world. Pam Greer, Barbie Benton, even the lovely little Jody Jensen in your fifth grade homeroom. Then you grow up and the wet dreams happen less frequently, but now you're getting the real thing, so who cares? Until one day you realize the woman that you're with, maybe even married to, don't look like Bobby Benton, ain't fucking like Pam Greer, and will never love you as purely and innocently as little Jody Jensen. <laughs> wet dreams. A boy don't know how good he's got it. You know when you're driving in your car or maybe taking a shower, and suddenly you remember some great dream you had? And that dream made you feel so good or bad or whatever, you can't help but try to recapture every detail. The next thing you know, you missed your exit ramp or the hot water's gone cold. Well, in Oz, if you take a shower and you space off even for a second, some cocksucker is sure to shank you in the back. Daydreams can be deadly. I heard once that every person in your dream is actually you. That even if you're dreaming about you and some motherfucker you can't stand, you're actually dreaming about you and the motherfucker part of yourself you can't stand. Everybody's got their own brand of miserable shit to deal with in life. But if you keep your eye on your dream, you'll pull through. In Oz, the opposite is true. The way to get through the shit is by having no dreams at all. In fact, one of the biggest consolations for a man doing time is knowing 90% of people in the outside world don't realize their dreams. So you see, we're not really missing out on anything, are we? Vikings. The word alone conjures up images of drunken hordes attacking and pillaging defenseless villages from the shores of Britain to the steppes of Russia. But we got a lot of misconceptions about the Vikings. Example, they never actually wore these stupid helmets. And because they had a limited amount of land on which to farm, they only pillaged to survive. I want to follow you. All Vikings were not stupid brutes. They had moments of brilliance. They were such great shipbuilders and sailors that Leif Erikson and his crew landed in America first. Some say traveling as far south as New York Harbor. But here's where the true brilliance comes in. They took a look, turned around and went home. According to Norse mythology, man was made from an ash tree and woman from an adder. The great god Odin gave them both life and souls and a place to live called Midgard, which Odin created from the eyebrows of a giant he slew. Sounds almost true, don't it? All of us. 
living on the edge of an eyebrow. Homosexuality? The Vikings had a code of behavior which they followed religiously. Honor and valor on the battlefield were the values that a warrior strived for. But much like the men in Oz, they had no concept of good and evil. They couldn't tell the difference. They didn't know there should be one. The Vikings eventually got civilized, became Christians. They're now the Danes, the Norwegians, the Swedes. What's ironic is, despite all them war-loving genes in their system, Norway now gives out the Nobel Peace Prize. I guess a people can change if they put their collective minds to it. People are always looking to have their fortunes told. They get their cards read, their palms read, even the bumps on their head. But if that card ain't credit, why read it? If that palm ain't holding something, let it go and shit. If you got bumps on your head big enough to read, forget about your future, yo. Because your problems are in the here and now. The model of law was murdered by James Robson. What kind of people become fortune tellers? Most times they're a bunch of half-literate, middle-aged women who only tell you stuff they wish would happen to them. They fabricate your dreams because theirs got dashed on the rocks. So how you figure that, huh? Having your future told by someone who ain't got one. Who's to say that the future ain't fucking with the fortune teller? Let's say that she tells you you're gonna fall in love, but she doesn't tell you that your beloved's gonna die of cancer and that she really is your long lost sister and a serial killer because the fortune teller don't know that. What if God or the spirits or whatever is only telling the fortune teller half the story? Half the truth. You walk by a storefront. A fortune teller beckons you inside. You know it's a scam, but you go anyway. As she flips the cards, you say to yourself, this is bullshit. And yet she says the one thing you really want to hear. You lean in a little closer, hoping, praying that she actually knows the truth. Well, I came straight from work. I'm a CEO at the Oswald Correctional Facility. In olden times, when you wanted to know what the future held, you'd drag your lamb down to the local witchy woman, where she'd proceed to slice him neck to ass and read his hot, steamy entrails. From this, somehow, your fortune was revealed. From some woman with cataracts and no teeth watching your livestock bleed out. Seems to me all you've done is lost a lamb, which ain't gonna help your fortune at all. No! Listen. For all the gypsies, seers, tea leaves, tarot cards, and Ouija boards, your life is your fucking life. So check that. There is one person who tells the future for a living, and he's right 100% of the time. Who's this magical motherfucker? He's called the judge. And all of us in Oz, we got our fortunes told. And let me tell you, the future, it ain't bright. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Now, there's a mind fuck if I ever heard one. The good side of my will is the road to damnation. Fuck, why even try being good? And if good intentions take you to the lake of fire, where do bad intentions lead? Oz. John and Jane Doe decide to go on a diet. Eat better, get healthy, live longer. What could be wrong with that? Well, studies now show that the stress John suffers from trying to lower his cholesterol can do as much harm as cholesterol itself. That the stress can actually raise his cholesterol. And take those low-fat, no-fat products. Shit's loaded with sugar to make it taste better. So while Jane's trimming down, she's jacking up her blood sugar and risking diabetes. Bottled water. What the fuck could be wrong with that? The bottles, my friend. 1.5 million tons of plastic are used for them each year, which means more toxic gases in the air we breathe. So, by going all natural, we're actually killing ourselves, killing the whole fucking planet. John and Jane Doe, both looking slim and sexy, meet, fall in love, decide to get married. John buys a nice fat diamond for Jane's finger. Sweet! Except for the fact that People in Africa are living in shit because of those precious little stones. 
Men are dying every day in dangerous mines. Men are dying every day in civil wars, fought to control the diamond trade. Anyway, John and Jane get married, start pumping out the kids. Shit, even God told Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. But now we've multiplied to the point of plague, six billion and counting. Suddenly, my cell don't seem so cramped. I don't know how I'm gonna give Julie up. John and Jane raise their kiddies to be decent citizens, teach them the laws of political correctness, teach them to respect other races, genders, body shapes, beliefs. But think about it. Doesn't making our children too aware of the differences plant the same seed of separateness? Are we blinding little Jane and John Jr. so that they only see what makes us different and not what makes us alike? So, that road to hell that's paved with good intentions? I'm not saying to make a detour, only that before you make your first step, consider the consequences. Because good can turn to bad in the blink of a fucking eye. Here are some scary facts about impotence. 10 to 20 million Americans suffer from it. 85% due to physical causes not related to the penis. 10% suffer because of psychological reasons. And scariest of all, for 5% of the men who are impotent, the cause is unknown. One of the physical causes of impotence is lack of frequent spontaneous erections. In other words, you can't get it up ah, because you don't get it up. Because you can't get it up. Because you don't get it up. Either way, you're fucked. I can't get it up. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Will you shut the fuck up? Impotence can also be the result of depression, marital discord, job stress, financial worries. That's right. A low salary can make a hard man soft. A drop in the Dow can diminish rising expectations. New studies show that even Viagra, which is supposed to help a fella get an erection, can sometimes cause problems in young, sexually active men who use the drug recreationally. You see, if an erection lasts longer than six hours, the blood supply gets cut off. Permanently, of course, after six hours, you know, maybe you don't give a shit. You know what I mean. Diabetes, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, high blood pressure, obesity, aging can all cause impotence. So can riding a bicycle. You put that hard seat between your legs, there may be nothing else hard between your legs for a long, long time. Hey, little brother. Who loves you? You do. Fucking hey. Drugs can cause impotence. Marijuana, heroin, steroids. So does alcohol and tobacco. 72% of men who smoke 20 or more packs a year suffer from penile artery clot. Anybody got an ashtray? <laughs>